Good morning. Welcome to Church Online. I'm Reverend Amy Bauman with For His Glory Ministry, and I am so glad that you're choosing to join us today. And I'm so honored that I get to spend part of your Christmas with you and your family. Over the course of the month, we have been looking at the gifts of the season, and today I am I'm very excited and privileged to be able to share what the Lord has put on my heart for the final gift we're going to be talking about today, which is love. And so many of us today maybe don't feel that love, we're missing someone we love, uh, we're in a strained relationship, we're feeling maybe alone, isolated, and I just pray that today you will tangibly feel the presence of God and how much He loves you. And I'm so glad that we're going to be sharing that love today and looking at that as we celebrate Christmas. So I have a lot to share with you as we look at that today. But before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you are Emmanuel, God with us, and that you sent your son into this world so that we could experience that that love. And as we sang this morning, go tell it on the mountain. Uh, Let the excitement of this season of Christmas, of the gift of Jesus, just be overwhelming in our hearts. And may we tell everyone we know uh, that Jesus Christ is born. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fall in this place, that you will open up our hearts and our ears, that you will give me a fresh revelation that I may speak your truth with love. And that we will know without a shadow of a doubt today when, when we stop this service that, that we are loved by an everlasting love from you. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I mentioned, we've been talking all month about the gifts of the season. Uh, we started off in December by looking at the gift of hope. Remember, biblical hope is rooted in the fact that in this life, we will have challenges, we will have difficulties, and and while we have those things, they are only temporary. Remember, this is not our home, and we have hope in Jesus that one day he will return and take us to our eternal home in heaven, and we can have hope that he is on the throne and in control and that we can have our hope in Him, not in the world, but in Him. On December 10, we looked at peace, and we remembered that peace is not the absence of war, that peace is a gift that Jesus wants to give us, that shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken. And Jesus came into the world as the Prince of Peace, and in Him we can have peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of our storms, we can have the peace that only Jesus can give us. And what a gift that is. And then last week, we looked at the gift of joy, true joy, not happiness, not based on how much money we have in our bank accounts or how much food is in our pantry or what's happening in our world today, that again, true joy comes from Jesus and that it's a gift. And we can have that gift when we remain in his love. And then today, Christmas Eve, we're going to look at the fourth and final gift of the season, love. And it's a most fitting uh, to end with love today because that's what Christmas is all about. How much God loved us that he sent his only son into the world. And we're celebrating that today. Now, if you were to look up the definition of love in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, this is what it reads. A feeling of strong or constant affection for a person. Attraction that includes sexual desire. The strong affection felt by people who have a romantic relationship. A person you love in a romantic way. 
Now, if you had never known what love meant until you read this in the dictionary, I believe the words that would stand out are a feeling, a desire, and a romantic love. So imagine for a second this uh, flame, this candle, and like a flame, it burns. It's, it can be hot. It's pretty to look at. It can be exciting and sweet and quick. And just like the candle, a fleeting moment, eventually that candle will burn out. And when it does, you just light a new candle, right? But this kind of love, this representation of this kind of love is easy. It's messy and it's a lie. This love, time and time again, will fail. And as we look at love and the definition of love, and as we look at us as a whole, as a culture, there are a few challenges that we face today in our culture when we try and love. When we try to love people in this world today, uh, the reason why we struggle is that we have this different mentality. We don't necessarily have the true love of God. We're trying to do it in our own strength, with our own ways of thinking. And the first reason that we struggle is that as a society, we have this throwaway mentality. If something doesn't work anymore, we don't have time to try and fix it. We don't have the funds to try and fix it. It's just easier to throw away and buy a new one, right? And we even see that as uh, manufacturers, <laughs> things don't last for 20 years like they used to, right? Uh, something might last three or four years and then you've got to go out and buy a new one. So we have this throwaway mentality. Second, seems to be that a person's value seems to be less than what it used to. A value of a human being. Today we have staggering statistics of sex trafficking and abandonment and abortion and suicide. And it seems that sometimes an animal has more value and rights than a person does. Our value of, of a human person seems less and less today. And then thirdly, how can we love others when so many of us don't even love ourselves or truly know what love is? And we see that today in relationships and in people. And part of that is the brokenness that is in our world today. Broken people birth broken people. We see families that are broken, that are struggling with the uh, struggles of addiction and depression and fear. And then eventually that family ends in divorce or splits up and then that cycle continues. Children are growing up without fathers and mothers, questioning their identity. And the next generation then doesn't know what love is. And we talked about that. I think it was even last week how the enemy of our soul, the devil, can come into a family and break it up and destroy it so that that family unit is no more. And then the trickle effect of all the people in the family and what that looks like for each person. And I shared with you how my own family, when I was growing up, ended in divorce and what that meant for my dad and my mom and my brother and myself as we went off and navigated life after the effects of the divorce and the brokenness. 
And we see that a lot today. A lot of people struggling with brokenness. So why are we struggling? Besides these three reasons that I've listed, part of it is we were designed to love and to receive love. And so when we're designed that way and we're not receiving what we need, we feel empty and we go out into the world and try to find something that will fill that hole in our hearts. We're forgetting, right? We're being so distracted and detoured with all of these shiny things and all of these ways that we can find happiness that we're getting distracted from what love really is. That God is love. And it's who he is and his very nature and his being. And that he created us to be in relationship with him so that he could love us and we could love him in the most beautiful and perfect way. And so when we are far from God, as I just mentioned, we have this hole in our hearts and we know that we're missing something, but we don't know what it is. So we go out into the world and try to find something to fill this hole. And people will use drugs and alcohol and other people and things of this world to try and fill that hole. I shared with you over the last couple of weeks that that was me. I felt the brokenness of our family and when the unit broke up, And we had to navigate things on our own in that brokenness that opened a doorway for the enemy to come in and tell me lies. And one of them was that I should have never been born. I was not truly loved. And that everything that happened was my fault. So I carried around these backpacks and suitcases filled with guilt and shame and regret and brokenness and I carried all of those things into all of my relationships including my first marriage and now with all of that baggage that I had I was trying to love another person in my own strength I was trying to love another person the way that I had been taught to love And from uh, what I was able to witness in uh, my parents' marriage. And that cycle continued. I can see that today. All of the misconceptions that I had about love and value and worth. And what it really meant to be loved. And I had no idea in my first marriage. I can see that today in families, in people that I work with through the ministry, the brokenness that they feel because they have been hurt by someone that they loved. Maybe it was a parent or a brother or sister or close friend or a spouse, boyfriend or girlfriend. The enemy of our soul doesn't want us to know God's love. He doesn't want us to know our true identity in Christ. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy, and will use whatever means possible to distract us from God. And the truth is, a lot of times he uses other lost and broken people to do it. He uses those people against us. And we learn about life and love from our broken relationships and broken people and the hurts that we've gone through. And we think, this is God's plan? This is God's love for us? Because 
I have felt nothing but a lack of love my entire life. Maybe today where you're watching from, you were abused as a child. Maybe sexually or physically or verbally. And the people that you relied on the most, your parents and family, hurt you. And that was your first view of love. Maybe you are in a relationship right now with a boyfriend or girlfriend and they've cheated on you and they've uh, gone off with someone else. And you're like, really? This is what love is? There's no vow. There's no value. There's no commitment. Maybe today uh, you are struggling in your marriage and your spouse is not coming home at night and is out at bars and drinking and, and carousing around. And you are home with the kids and you're like, really God, this is what love is. This is what marriage is. I know I felt that way. The brokenness from the people that I did life with and the way that they had learned to love and how they loved me. And instead of trying to find God and trying to find what his true plan was, I built walls around myself. I built walls around myself to protect myself from being hurt. I isolated myself and I said, you know what? It'll be better if I'm just alone, alone in my own sorrow. And that's what I did. I built this wall around my life. I lived with bitterness and resentment towards other people. I had unforgiveness in my heart for things that had been done to me and wrongs that had been committed to me. And I was mad at God. Really, God, this is your version of love? This was love? But my friends, this is not how God created it to be. We got to remember that God's original design was Eden. It was perfect. It was man and woman in relationship with each other and God in relationship with them. And there was no fear and there was no pain and there was no tears and no rejection. There was just love. But we know the story. Sin came into the world and the enemy found a doorway with Eve and Adam. And sin broke in and everything changed. But God, God never changed. And when this happened, he put a plan in place to restore us back to himself. And that plan was Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason why we celebrate Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. God broke in to the world and gave us his one and only son to restore us back to himself. So that because of Jesus, we can know love again. Because of Jesus, we can live without fear. Because of Jesus, we can forgive those that have hurt us. Because of Jesus, we can love other people the way that God intended for us to love. So what does that kind of love look like? The text is from 1 Corinthians 13. Paul is talking to us about love and how it's indispensable and how if we do not have love, we are nothing. In verse 4, he writes this, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. 
it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Have you known that kind of love? In verse 13, it says this, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That's why Jesus came. That's why he sent his one and only son into the world to be born as a baby, to walk among us, to live among us so that we can look at Jesus and we can say, we can do this too. Jesus did with God's help. And in all things, God knows what we need. He knows that we need Jesus. He knows what each And every one of us needs separately because he created us. He made us. He formed us. He knows exactly what you need today more than anyone else because you're his creation. And he knows all of us need his guidance to navigate living in this broken world. And that we can't do it on our own. We can't do it in our flesh in these bodies. The brokenness that we experience while living with other broken people, battling our flesh and the desires that we want as sinful creatures. This will cause us to go by our feelings and attractions to want love like that candle fleeting, hot, but temporary. If we were to live by our feelings each and every day, those can change. Let me tell you, I know some days I feel really close to my husband. I feel really close to my husband. But if I'm in a mood and he's in a mood and we've said words to each other and we've hurt each other, well, then I no longer feel like it. I'm angry with him. I'm disappointed in him. I'm disappointed in myself. But then because I don't feel like being in love, that feeling shouldn't dictate how I treat him, whether or not I stay or whether or not I love him based on that feeling that I have in that weak moment, if I'm tired or if I'm hungry or if he's caught me at a bad time. We can't base love off of feelings because those change each and every day. Love is choosing to love that person even when you don't feel like it. Love is choosing to honor commitments in good times and in bad, to not have a throwaway mentality when something isn't working anymore to say, okay, well, I'll go out and find somebody else to love because this obviously isn't working. But let me remind you of what we talked about last week. Family is exactly what the enemy wants to destroy. And of course you're going to have struggles. The enemy is going to fire these fiery darts at you and your your spouse constantly to try to break up your family. Hence, break up uh, what God has created, what God has made. Love is choosing to repair the parts that are broken instead of casting them aside. Love is loving each other the way that God loves us. In spite of our brokenness, in spite of our sin, in spite of our failings. I know I make mistakes every single day. Yet God still loves me because of what Jesus did on the cross.
and God loved us so much that the word, his word took on flesh and became Jesus, right? But we have his word, the Bible, his truth as a love letter to us, helping us to make decisions and following his guidelines because he knows us best and he knows what we need each of us. First John 4:19 tells us that we love because he loved us first. Ephesians 4:2 tells us to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Romans 12:9 says love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And lastly, John 15, 12. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. How has God loved us? I don't know about you, but I can look back at my life and see all of the moments. I can see the good moments where I was blessed and I can see the bad moments where I had made a choice to walk down a path that was without God and God still walked with me holding my hand, urging me to turn back. He was there when people hurt me. He was there when people tried to take me off the path. He has been there each and every time. He's faithful. He has not left me. And I bet that if you take a moment and look back at your life, you can see that that God has been there too for you. In the dark moments, in the hard times, in the places where you did not know how you could go on, He was there. He loves you. He was trying to get your attention in some small way with a person or a place or a voice, through a stranger, through a hot cup of coffee, through a church service. The Holy Spirit was working and moving. And maybe you heard him. And maybe you didn't. But it doesn't change the fact that God has always been there. He loves us so much that he sent his one and only son into the world. This is Christmas. This is the reason why we celebrate God's overwhelming love for us. 1 John 4 verses 9 and 10 reads this. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And Romans 5, 8 shows how God demonstrated this love. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While I was still sinning, while I was still turning my face away from Jesus, while I was still operating in my flesh and making choices that felt good and that I wanted to make, while I was still spending, while I was still living in addiction, while I was still hurting those people around me, Jesus Christ died for my sins. It was my sin that held him there. Not 
not the nails, not the ropes. It was my sin that held him there. It was your sin that held him there. And yet he did that because he loves us. So how do we love today? We cannot do it in our own strength. Trust me, I've tried. I'm sure you've tried too. Loving a person, loving a family, loving yourself. It is not the way the world shows us how. It is not this throwaway mentality. It is not that there is no value in people. We need to receive the gift of Jesus so that we can love the way that God loves us. Jesus is key. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the only way that we will have true hope and peace and joy and love as we live in this broken world. We need the gift of Jesus so that we can love others the way that God loves us. God's love is unconditional, extravagant, unstoppable. He keeps no records of wrongs. He meets us right where we are, loves us right where we are, and helps us to grow into who he created us to be. Maybe you haven't believed that up until today. Maybe you haven't been able to believe that God created you and has great plans for you, created you for such a time as this because you've been listening to the enemy. You've been listening to all the lies that, that you're a mistake, that you should never have been here, that maybe everything is your fault. My friends, I listen to those same lies. You see, the enemy is not creative, but he is consistent. And he continues to spin the same lies to each one of us. We all hear the same thing. I'm standing here today because I choose not to listen to the lies anymore. I believe that Jesus is greater. I believe that the enemy is under my feet. I believe that I am who God created me to be. And I choose to step out in that faith every single day. I no longer live the way I used to live. Today, I live because of Jesus. When we love God and are willing to serve Him, there is this overflow there is this spilling out of, of love for other people that we can't contain. We can look at other people and, and see their situation and want to love them and help them and pray for them because maybe we were there once. Or we can look and see them and have this overwhelming love in our hearts that God gives us so that we can be His hands and feet, loving them right where they are meeting them right where they are and sharing with them the good news of Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts believing that love is patient and kind, that it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love is not fleeting like a candle and temporary. Love never fails. These are the gifts of the season, my friends. Hope and peace and joy and love. 
And the question for all of us today is are we going to receive them? Are we going to open the gift this year and allow Jesus to come into our lives and work and move as only he can? All of us, no matter where we are watching from today, get a present this year. It's whether or not we're going to choose to open it up. It's whether or not we're going to choose to receive Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so thankful on this Christmas Eve that we get to celebrate together, standing together, unifying our faith from all over the world, being your church, believing, choosing to believe that we are loved by you, choosing to believe that Jesus is the reason for the season, choosing to believe that this was your design, love, perfect love. Perfect love casts out fear. And that the way that we see the shape of the world today is not your design. It's the cause of years upon years and generation upon generation of sinful choices made by men and women. But you, Lord, you had a plan to restore us back into a right relationship with you and you did it with Jesus. Because of Jesus, we can have these gifts. Because of Jesus, we can have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life, but we need to choose the gift. We need to open it up and receive Jesus. And if that's you today, if you've been on the fence, if you have been walking a life and you've been missing out, you have been lost in brokenness, living a life of sin and regret, not feeling the true love of God, then all you have to do is pray this prayer. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that you sent him into this world to restore us back to you. I believe that he died on a cross. I believe that he died to forgive me of my sins. So today, Lord, I repent of my sins. I invite you to come in and live in my life, in my heart, and rule as Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I choose to follow you, to leave behind the sin and the shame and my past, and for you to make all things new again. From this day forward, Lord, I want to serve you. Please come into my heart. And thank you for everything that you are going to do. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that prayer. It's as easy as reaching out your hand and receiving the gift and opening it up. And Father God, I thank you for everything that you have done, all the ways that you're working and moving. And I pray for each person today, each person watching, each person listening, that they will feel your love today in a real and tangible way that they will feel your presence, that they will receive the gift. We love you and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today, but not only today, but all of you that have followed along over the course of the year, all of you that have been praying for us as well and supporting the ministry and what a blessing it is to come together and worship our Lord. Don't forget to join us next week for our New Year's Eve service as we're starting off a new year 2024. But from my family to yours, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And I want to leave you with this final song, Silent Night.
silent night Holy night All is calm All is bright Round yon virgin Mother and child So tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep in heavenly peace Glory stream from heaven afar Heavenly hosts sing hallelujah Christ the Savior is born Christ the Savior Silent night, holy night, sign of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dark. All is bright Round yon virgin mother